Welcome to my story. Today we are going to visit Kisumu City. Kisumu City receives a rainfall of less than 2,000 millimeter every year. We are going to the hills, Kajulu Hills, Eco Villages. We are going to tell the story of the Eco Secrets of the Octagon. Follow me throughout this story. So this is Kajulu Hills, Eco Villages. Uh, the, the diversity we can see already, we can see the bananas, we can see the pineapples, the napia grass, the jack beans. Well, this is great. Uh, let's go in and meet this talented group of art people, the, the people who are doing regenerative work and biodiversity. Yeah, let's... welcome to Kajulu Hill Seco Villages yes. and also Kisumu City Pamakachi Academy. Mm -hmm. My name is Maurice Obuya. I am the CEO of Kajulu Hill Seco Villages and Kisumu City Pamakachi Academy. Uh, at some point in time, I was looking for a place to start a project, my permaculture project. And uh, I went through different areas. I've, I saw a lot of flat lands, plain lands, different types of lands. But when I arrived here, I saw so many edges. And uh, the more the edges, the, 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 more <coughs> the, the more the resources in a system. Okay, first of all, we, uh, I did an assessment <coughs> of the whole place. It's about uh, 30 acres and it's in between two rivers uh -huh. on both sides. So I did an assessment and then I realized that uh, it's very difficult to develop and maintain this whole place. Then after doing an assessment, I identified the location for the house, which I'm going to explain later. Uh -huh. And then I realized that uh, I could start with an extensive system. Uh -huh. So I made about 320 by 20 by by five meters plots mm -hmm. with the five meters distance apart. Mm -hmm. Then I put uh, almost like around 50 tree lines. After every 20 meters, we have different types of trees. We have cottons, mm -hmm. we have macamia, we have albizia, we have uh, eucalyptus. Yes. So there are about five lines of each going round, uh, okay. following an octagonal shape of the house. Yeah. Round, going around the house like this. So I started developing from the house going downwards. Yeah. Uh, then I started putting elements, uh -huh. starting with the green manure, which was a pigeon peas, yeah. and then oranges, mangoes, mm -hmm. and then we have a few pomegranate, and we also have mulberry, and we have uh, look, look what we have uh, macadamia, mm -hmm. yes, and other passions, and many other bananas now, yeah. and different many other different types of, of, of fruits. Uh -huh. And then after that, I started by adding edges within the, the, the plots, but I started by putting uh, napier grass and uh, lemon grass, uh -huh. edges around the, the farms. Yeah. And then I, I transitioned from uh, uh, pigeon peas now to gi giant beans, which I'm now doing now. Uh -huh. And the place is producing itself, and most of the places I'm getting the vines from within the place as I extend the, the, system. the system and it becomes more stable as I add the edges. Uh, yeah. I can also see indigenous uh, plants that uh, look like they are pioneer crops. Uh, what did you do to them? You, you conserve them? Or? Yes. Uh -huh. One of the, the, the techniques that we use here uh -huh. is also a principle of permaculture is uh, called what, conservation. Yes. Yeah, so we conserved all the indigenous trees mm -hmm. and all the indigenous fruits. Yeah. Before we started, we had made a nursery at Jefferson's, mm -hmm. Pamakachekos Fairs in Kindu Bay. Yes. And uh, we made the nursery for, for three years. We prepared the trees for three years. Yes. The ones that we conserved, I think there are millions of them. Yeah. And guavas here, jambolans, and yeah. many other indigenous, so there are millions of them within yeah. the system. We conserved almost 100%. This is great work. But we removed the invasive species. Uh -huh. uh, if you look at the octagon shape, it has very many edges. It's one of the shapes with the most edges. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, so, and I said that the more the edges, the more the resourceful the system is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I decided to follow that uh, shape of the octagon, octagon and appreciate its ecological uh, uses and also trying to expound on the importance of edges in a system. Mm -hmm. Yes, and also you find that different 
parts of the system where there are very many edges like here, yeah, the amount of moisture on the soil is so much higher than where there is no edge at all, where it is flat. And also water conservation is also very high. Um, we, are, we were lucky to be and privileged to be through the Reliance Network Global yes. to be supported by the Generosity Network yes. to start this uh, project which is focusing on East Africa. It's called East African Bioregional Zones mm -hmm. and Biodiversified Hotspots. Hot yeah? mm -hmm. So I think it went with the theme uh, with what I'm doing so much because that's what I was doing. But uh, at the end of the day, the system wanted to be, we needed to make the system more stable. Yeah. Okay. So through this project, we are able to brand our system. We have around six uh, members units here. Uh -huh. yeah. And then we have also another eight community members units. Uh -huh. Now together with uh, our two auxiliary units at Jefferson's and uh, Steve Tolo Indigenous in Tropic System, we have brand branded all of them. Okay. And then we have also it also helps us to maintain the system, but through weeding and removing invasive species. And we are able to add about uh, more layers, like we started with the bananas, uh -huh. we added about 200 uh, vines, some of them are, are growing in the first phase. Uh -huh. Now the second phase, we are adding another 200 vines, and then we also have pineapples, we added pineapples, yeah, as a cover crop also. Yeah. And in other places, we also added the green manure uh -huh. to extend the, the system. And we have also added uh, these uh, uh, coconut trees, yeah, because we want to people to come and learn about diversity here and see all the crops that can, are able to survive here, mm -hmm. based on the environment that we have here. Mm -hmm. And we have also planted already about 1,000 bamboos, mm -hmm. bamboo trees, because of their, their, their potential, of the regenerative potential. Mm -hmm. And we have also put another 1,000, 10,000 in the nursery there. And uh, because of the adverse weather, we have also conserved some coconut trees, uh -huh. waiting for the weather to improve so that we can be able to plant them. Uh -huh. we, have, we created a nursery for the project, oh, yes. and we also brought a seed bank for the community members. Ah, yes. Where you have seeds. Where we have indigenous seeds, yeah. which are regenerative. Yes. And those seeds actually can take this project for the next like 20 years. And if they keep on regenerating them, uh -huh. they can even produce uh, seeds that can serve the whole of this community. Because they are vegetables, cereals, yeah, and also indigenous ones, which are very highly nutritive. Uh -huh. They are resistant to pests and diseases, uh -huh. and they produce seeds which can grow again. Yeah, uh, this is a, it's, it's designed as an eco village, and uh, I'll just show you the first uh, structure that we're trying to put, which is act as the central structure. Yes. But uh, it's designed that each and every uh, unit each and every member will have a small natural cottage uh -huh. which is off grid uh -huh. uh, using solar system uh, harvesting its own water like now this one here this is going to harvest its own water from the rain uh -huh. and then we use solar and then we use natural materials yes people can can the, we, we spent the the night there in the tents yeah yeah uh -huh. so people can just come here and, and spend uh, nights and even when they have students they come and camp here uh -huh. and learn Okay. They can even come and camp here and stay and work. Sometimes we come here and camp and stay, like doing this project. Mm -hmm. When we come here, we stay for about two weeks. We, we stay in the tents uh -huh. as we are working here. Uh, Kisumu City Permaculture Academy um, is our training institution, and we hope also to host it here. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, we are training at Jefferson's Permaculture Ecospheres, and we have a field trip here, mm -hmm. and to Steve Tolo mm -hmm. uh, Farm, and also to Mkilima Sasa Syntropic Farm. Yes. At in Uyoma Siaya. Yeah. Uh, so we, these are some of the sites that we bring in students to learn. Okay. Yes, because we, we do practical training and we want the students to see oh. what we are saying as it is working. Okay. Yeah. So every every March, mm -hmm. July yes. and November yes. we hold advanced permaculture training. Ah. So the advanced permaculture training they, they they talk about the we teach about the original 18 principles of Bill Mollison of mass regeneration yes. and uh, also five ethics of mass regeneration. So these principles they are in line with the natural principles and sciences yeah. of trying to bring up uh, a lost uh, ecosystem. So uh, basically, what we are trying to do uh, in a night in a nutshell is that we are trying to restore the indigenous ecosystems that were supporting food production. Yeah. In the ancient times, like in our community, we used to have what is called the indigenous, uh, is it warehouse or 
or granary. Yes, yes. Granaries. Yes. yes. Each and every homestead used to have. Right now, mm -hmm. we don't have any. Yeah. So those are some of the things. When we have abundance production, mm -hmm. we need also to revive those uh, granaries, and that's also one of the reasons why I'm planting bamboos, uh -huh. yes. so that in future I can be able to to, to use them to make these granaries. Uh, we're still telling the eco secrets of the octagon, and uh, as you can see, a lot of biodiversity. We have the mango, we have the jack bean, we have the grass, we have the lemon grass, and many more all over the place. Uh, remember, we were told that uh, there are eight units uh, that uh, have been given to community members, and today we want to talk to one of the community members uh, to tell us what is happening here. Hello, Mama. Yeah. Uh, Leonida. Mm -hmm. uh, Leonida, naona mmekuwa mkifanya kazi nzuri sana hapa. Tunashukuru. Ah, tungeomba tu pengine tueleze ni nini mmekuwa mkifanya hapa na ni nini naendelea hapa around. Hapa tunaweka kama tunaweka shamba. Uh -huh. Sasa hivi tunaweka kama majani ya chai. Eh. Uh -huh. Tukiweka hapa hivi live hivi. Uh -huh. Sasa maji ikitokea huko haiwezi kupitia huko na mimi na mchanga. Oh, inazuia so ndio rosha. Inazuia lakini uh -huh. naona matawi. Uh -huh. Ni matawi yake uh -huh. kama mbolea. Uh -huh. Hii ndisi uh -huh. tulichimba uh -huh. tunaweka ndani. Uh -huh. Sasa vile tumesaweka hivi. Uh -huh. Tunaweka hizi matawi ya tunaweka kama mbolea. Uh -huh. eh, mulch. Eh, tena upande huu tuko na mto. Uh -huh. Tunaona imesaa mea. Uh -huh. Tutaweka mbolea ni mbegu. Tutatoa uh -huh. alafu tunatumikia ya kukula na ya mbego te. Mbego te. Oh, na naona pia kuna miti miti. Eh, hey, miti tunaweka hawa kama hii na nini machungu. Ukisawa uh -huh. toa mmeo yake, uh -huh. tunausa, tunapata pe. Tunapata uh -huh. pata tunatumia. Still inside uh, Kajulu Hills, Eco Villages, uh, we took a walk inside the indigenous seed bank. And we can see a lot of seed. Na hizi naona mmeweka hapa hizi ni nini? Hizi. Hii ni nasari ya bambu. Ah, nice bambu. Sasa mmeweka zikisha tokea? Eh, zikisha tuweka toka na peleka kwa shamba. Tuweka kwa system. Ah, very nice. Ah, naona. Hizi ziko kama ngapi hivi? Hii ziko kitu elfu kuni hivi. Ah, ndiyo hizi naona kila mahali hapa. Nice, nice. Na, hapa pengine? Apa? Ini nasari. Ini nasari ya coconut. Nas. Ini tu nas. Ama menas. Izi mas. Menaso kama miamoja i. Miamoja. So masa apa ya izi ziki koma? Nas peleka kuasamba. Nas peleka kuasamba. Ah, ini projek mulu di sana. Naita Richard Otieno. Richard Otieno. Kama i. Uh huh. Ini nepia grass. Uh huh. Ina zoya soil erosion. Uh huh. Ina tena i lemon grass. Uh huh. Tena i nepia grass. Uh huh. Ina tumiwa kama mulching. Uh huh. Yeah. Ambani ina leta mbolea. Ina leta mbolea pia. Yeah. Na ina zoya. Ina zoya direct radiation. Oh. Ah. Hmm. So apa kwa nafasi kidogo tunaweza ona vitu ngapi? Naona pineapple pia iko. Kuna pineapples, eh, uh -huh. mango. Kuna mango pale. Ndio. Uh -huh. eh, kuna vitu vingi hapa. Eh. Kwa nafasi kidogo tunaona vitu vingi. Great. Uh, so, unaweza kuambia watu tofauti ya hii na ile ukulima ya kupanda mahindi na na maragwe ile kazi muona kazi yake ni rahisi ama kazi yake ni ngumu gani kazi yake ni rahisi okay i uh -huh. naweza sema kazi yake ni rahisi juu uh -huh. atuhitaji vitu mingi hapa kitu tunatumia sana sana ni hiyo mbolea ya kienyeji hiyo uh -huh. miadi ah, kwa hivyo hakuna kununua mbolea atusumukani kununua mbolea hata hiyo bado inafanya tu po my name is Jawal Suremboya uh -huh. yeah, i'm a member of the Kajulu Hills Eco villages, yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit about your farm and uh, the benefit of uh, what Kajulu Hills Eco villages is doing. Yeah. So what are the people doing out there? Yeah. So as you can see here, it is called an integrated banana farm. Yeah, we have planted bananas, we have planted bananas, pineapples, cassavas. From the distance, you can see pumpkins. So what I can say about this farm, it has this great diversity. Yeah, diversity. Other than the other other farms that is monocropping, 
You can see there's the use of herbicides, fertilizers, which can in turn destroy the earths, the earth, the soil, and the minerals found in the soil. I'm Steve Tolo, a member of Kajulu Hills Eco Villages. Here we do integrated uh, farming uh, using natural resources, uh, pest repellent like behind me. We have a lot of uh, lemon grass which have been forming, which have formed the edges here. They act as pest repellent. We have conserved uh, indigenous trees, uh, fruits, and uh, a lot of uh, diversity can be seen. This kind of farming is very uh, cheap first because you don't go and buy. Uh, we don't buy seeds. We do regenerate. We don't buy uh, chemical fertilizers. And uh, it also helps develop your soil because uh, the soil grows too, the soil is living. Uh, we conserve and it's environmental friendly. Uh, this kind of farming also is give, it gives a lot of yield because you have diversity of crops. Uh, so you can harvest from both uh, kind of plants you have. Yeah. The site was identified through the process of a principal political relative location. It was the highest point in the in the in the property, and then it was surrounded by eight more than eight big uh, stones, and then there were some few stones inside. And so when I do, did an assessment, I realized that uh, it can be a very good spot for making the house because it's at the highest point and it's surrounded by pillars which also act already act as building materials for the walls. So when I was going through the different designs, I realized the only design that could come here was the octagonal shape because the pillars were making an octagonal shape. So the house has uh, eight, eight, eight sides. This is one of them here, another one there, another one there. And you can see there are also pillars like the one that I'm leaning on here. This is part of the wall of the house. There's another big one there. And then there are some on the other side. Uh -huh. yes. So this, uh, these walls were integrated within the pillars, and the ones that were inside there, we tried to, to, to remove them so that yeah. we can have the, the floor. Great. Yes. Yeah. So after doing this, uh -huh. so all these farms, this uh, our farms, our plots uh -huh. are following this shape, going around the house like this. Octagonal. Octagonal Everything shape. is going the octagon. They're going around the house like this. All the. The farms are going round the house like this, from the first one up the last one. So, uh -huh. uh, with that now we have millions of edges. I can say, yes. yeah. So, if you add to the edges that we have created and the edges that we found, uh -huh. I think we have uh, millions of uh, edges, and that's what we are talking about. The uh, we are trying to to expound that by talking about the octagon. So, the more the edges you have, even the spider uh -huh. follows the same shape. Yes. Yeah. So, the more the edges that you have in your in your system. Uh -huh the more uh, resourceful your system is. Working with the nature, uh, in nature, yeah. uh, naturally. Yes. Yes, without uh, taking advantage of the existing resources, without trying to clear everything and starting afresh everywhere, because that is the trend that everybody is doing now. Great. Yes, and now all these stones are from here. They have just been picked around from here. Yes. And we are picking more. I think during the Regenerosity Network project, we were able to add this lintel here. Uh -huh. And also able to add uh, one wall that was missing. Yeah. So now the the we have done half of the lintel. Uh -huh. So after this, we are going to put a flat roof here, yeah. and then we'll put some uh, aluminium poles around. We'll have some rooms up here, uh -huh. yeah, with yeah. light material, yeah. and then we'll have flat roof, yeah, which is made of some new technology with slabs, yeah, small slabs. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So and then we'll have uh, a garden also, uh -huh. and also we'll have uh, a lounge on top here, ah. just to get fresh air and some few rooms for the guests. Actually, we are targeting oh. to have 88 cottages. Oh. We already identify different areas like this within the property. We have more than uh, 30 caves around here, uh -huh. where we have good arrangement of stones. Uh -huh. We are going to integrate those cottages within the stones and the uh -huh. homes of some of the members. Regenerate the planet! Regenerate the people! Regenerate the people! Regenerate the planet! Regenerate the people!